Waitangi House, up in Waitangi, there is a Tanako chair which was gifted by the people of the South Island um, called the Bledslow chair and my grandmother and three other women wove the Tanako seat on it. So there's weaving in my blood. My mother is, was a conservationist so through her I learnt about harvesting and protecting the Māori fibres that we use within weaving. World-renowned Māori weavers, um, Digaris Takanawa and Emily Schuster, were travelling the motu to share information about their concerns of mahi raranga dying, and they wanted to keep it alive. Um, at that time, my job was to cook and they wanted to talk to weavers and when I saw some of the people going into the room to weave I thought well if they're weavers so am I. Six months later with our new whare nui being built the marae needed pew pew, kurawai, whāriki uh, so through Digaris and Emily they came and helped um, during that time Emily asked if I could go up north with her for two weeks, with two other young women, and we wove the first ever whāriki for the opening. That was 30 years ago, and I have continued till this day, sharing the knowledge that I have been taught. Well, I was attracted to Raranga because I have always admired the skill and seeing the traditional methods that the Māori used. So when I heard of uh, the course being offered here in Blenheim, I jumped at the opportunity. The thing I like about weaving is you can get lost in it. You can forget about everything that's happening around you and get lost. About putting aroha into what you're making, really sort of thinking about your, what you're making and really yeah, putting a lot of love and thought into it, what you're making and why you're doing it. and It's a different way of learning about it rather than just going to a course and learning the language or something. We're actually here and we're sort of experiencing a big part of it. My name's Leslie. Uh, I live over in Mapua, which is over by Nelson. I've been coming over to this Raranga course for the year. Someone who is a little bit lost, especially a Māori person who's lost, needs to get back to their whakapapa or where they come from and have their inspiration and know that their, you know, their connection to the atua in this, in this form, it's a tangible form for them to do it. Just being able to reconnect, I suppose, in a sense, and, and just to know that everything that my nan done, it didn't, you just don't go pick a flax and make a bag. You know, there's that whole process of getting to this point. I look forward to coming to Noho Maraia for our wānanga. Um, it's, a, it's a time where I get to be with other weavers and we get to talk and just sit and create beautiful mahi. When I first started weaving again this year, I, it was almost like riding a bike. You know, I knew what to do, I, I, but I just had to just get back into the flow of things again. We're really, really lucky to have someone like Margaret who's willing to um, share her skills and um, and try and bring out um, your creative skills as well. She's she's really open to you know um, we've got some very creative people on our course, and they you know you can see them wanting to bust open and and she's sort of reined them in when she's needed to, but she's let them go. And um, towards the end, you can just see the beautiful work that they've put out and. Um, yeah, she's let us use our imagination. No matter what we do, she thinks whatever we've done is beautiful. For me, Margaret uh, really helped me just to step back and just to chill out a bit and um, to really just enjoy the process and to, to relax in it because that's what it's all about. And it's about the community. It's about coming together um, and, yeah, and, and giving each other support. I've just really needed to step back and, and to accept that and to, to stay with the flow of things really and to, yeah, just to relax and enjoy the process rather than always trying to race to get to the end and the finished product because that's not what it's all about. So, so being here in this environment on the Marae, uh, it's really given 
a sense of community and coming together and it's about the people and what can we do for each other. It's not just about ourselves and our, and our personal gains, it's about what we can bring to each other and the people. Margaret, she, she's so knowledgeable and she's so happy to share her knowledge. It doesn't matter what level you're at or what you're able to do. All of us started at different stages and some of us are, are um, naturally more skilled than others but it, it doesn't matter, we all support each other and um, Margaret sort of really encourages that environment. For someone who's not Māori and is interested in doing this course, um, I'd recommend it definitely. It's, it's, the people are so welcoming, um, supportive um, and if you're interested in doing something creative, um, they're just yeah, really supportive and encouraging and it, it's just a great way to really learn about the culture but also learn about how to make kitty. Yeah. Marg as a tutor um, has a different way of teaching than other tutors that I've been with but everyone has their own individual style of doing things and no matter who they are you can always learn something from them even if you think you've, you're quite um, well taught with any particular branch of Rauranga. No, I wasn't an artist before I started weaving and although it's brought out a lot of creative things, um, I'm quite influenced by the people I'm weaving with. You know, a, a way of people to come together and then, you know, work through through their issues and problems and hopefully come out with a beautiful kitty and some positive changes to their life. So that's, that's my goal with it. I travel out once a year. I take my students, I show them our way, the upper way of how to pick and harvest um, care care and it's a journey that I will continue to do, sharing the knowledge that I have been taught. I learned Rauranga. I wasn't aware of the um, materials that exist in the Nahiri in the forest that might be able to help us with weaving or be used for weaving. Um, for instance, there's a beautiful bark from the Rodoko tree and you learn to distinguish which trees they are which can be um, scraped off the bark of, of the tree, off the trunk of the tree, with a mussel shell, and then um, boiled in water, and it produces a natural, beautiful yellow dye. I to go to Tennyson Inlet and harvest a kikia. That was, um, I mean, not just fun, but it was, it was a really cool experience. Um, something that I love about doing the course is that what we're doing, we're just collect, collecting natural resources around us and making beautiful things. Learning the uh, tikanga of, of the Māori people was really important um, and also to be able to use some of those traditional methods uh, with extracting mocha so that I can use them for my carvings. I think learning to weave teaches you a number of things. Uh, the biggest quality I think is persistence because nothing comes easy, well not to me, in weaving um, and you have to have the perseverance to actually prepare the materials which can take up to a year before you actually get to put everything together and make a piece that is good enough to display before people. I decided this year to concentrate on Pew Pew which I had made one previously but I wasn't completely confident that I knew the process. So for my initial project I have made three miniature pew pew um, so that I would do the three waistbands, there's a way of weaving those and I've used three different patterns as well. So this is the undyed pew pew which has had sections of the harakeki strand extracted to expose the white mocha and then we've used the traditional way of dyeing um, which makes the mocha sections go black and makes the pattern stand out as well. And with my, this, this pew pew I'm going to use um, modern chemical dye to compare it with the traditional way of dyeing.
This kitty is um, a kitty whakapō ariari. Um, it's got the little holes in it where I've had to twist the hairakiki and manipulate it. Um, that's my understanding that they were originally developed um, for when the Māori were diving and so all the water would drain out the holes. Um, and this pattern was um, woven by a weaver from Te Whānau Apanui, which is my tribe. Um, so every piece that I've done, I've, I've done a Te Whānau Apanui pattern, which I feel connected to. Yeah, so I really like that pattern. <laughs> Any pattern. This, the colour, I chose this colour because it reminded me, I'm Ngaitahu, and it reminded me of Pounamu. And um, so I um, put this, um, put these colours together in mind to give to my daughter. Um, and I know she'll love it because green is one of her favourite colours. And um, so, yeah, that's why I did it this way. The other reason is um, I wanted, I used colour for my patterns um, as my, um, Kitty for Kairo, and um, I used one colour, then two colours, then three colours um, for my exhibit for our exhibition. This one, um, which is the kau kau, uh also represents uh, woman um, and weaving and uh, holding the baby. So for me, that that was really important. Um, and so my children and my family have been a huge inspiration, and I wanted to show that in my journey with learning not only this new skill, but also new skills um, for my life and to, to bring into my family and yeah, into my community, so. The piece I've got here to show you is my, call, I call it Ngā Mihi Ki e weka. Um, because this is, this kiti um, came from one of my morning travels over here to Omaka, and um, I was driving along and it was really, really misty, it was early in the morning and there was a weka that obviously had died on the road just not long. So I, I had to stop and pick it up because um, the feathers are just amazing. And um, so I picked this wicker up and then I made this beautiful kitty to just in honour of, of that wicker's life. So the browns are the wicker and the green, the green is the life that was around because of the, the beautiful ngahere, the bush that's there around Polaris, and this yellow is around coming into Havelock. It was, like I said, it was a really, really misty morning. And just as I was coming into Havelock, the sun just peeked through and came across the um, beautiful Moana that's there. So that's, that's that little peeking through of sunshine. So that's the skite. Hi, so kia ora. <laughs> The different elements and things that they've been using in the patterns and design work is pretty amazing. So um, yeah, it's really interesting and it's really cool to see what they've been doing. I couldn't believe there were so many wahine in one place and wondering what they were up to. Um, and I just, I'm blown away by how amazing the, the work is that they've done. Um, and using a natural resource, it's fantastic. And what would you say to anyone who was considering doing that course? Oh my God, uh, womanhood. <laughs> Come along, a whole lot of ladies together, um, sharing your kōrero and putting it into karakeke. I mean, what could be better than that? It's amazing. Um, I think the other thing too, there's, there's so many ethnic 
different people doing it, you know. We've got a couple of um, Asian people in there, there's Haka, there's Māori. It just brings um, females together. It's, it's just amazing.